Why don't Christians have a prophet like the Mormon church does? Hasn't God always operated through prophets? How are we supposed to know what to do in today's world without modern revelation? Well, quite simply, Christians do have a living prophet. His name is Jesus. And in this video, I want to show you exactly what the Bible teaches about this issue of modern prophets. The Old Testament teaches that God had a special and unique kind of relationship with men in the Old Testament who held the office of prophet. Men like Moses, Isaiah, and Daniel had a special role among God's people. God would speak to them and they would relay the word of the Lord to the people. In fact, Amos 3.7 goes so far as to say, the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. Whenever God wanted to communicate something to his people, he would communicate to them through prophets. So because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, doesn't that mean that we should expect God to speak through prophets today, just like he did in the Old Testament? The answer from the Bible is an emphatic no. Here are three reasons why. Number one, Jesus fulfills the office of prophet. In Old Testament Israel, God's people needed mediators to stand between them and God. These mediators were prophets and priests. Prophets spoke on behalf of God to the people, and priests offered sacrifices on behalf of the people to God. Today, we no longer need those roles. Why? Because Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of prophets and priests. Hebrews 1.1 says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. In other words, a long time ago in Israel's history, God would speak various messages through various people called prophets. But in these last days, he has definitively spoken in his son. Where prophets once mediated between God and his people, now stands Jesus, the ultimate prophet. 1 Timothy 2, 5 through 6 says, For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. Number two, today God's spirit is given to all Christians. Under the old covenant, God's spirit was specifically given to prophets to equip them for their special role. But this special giving of God's spirit was extremely limited. At any given time in Israel's history, only a small number of people were gifted in this way. The rest of the people then were wholly dependent on these spirit-filled men to operate as intermediaries. In fact, at one point, Moses actually said he wished that all God's people could have the spirit in this way. Numbers 11 records, But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. But now God's spirit is freely given to all Christians. Jesus taught prior to his crucifixion, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. This promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. On that day, God gave his spirit to the men and women waiting in Jerusalem. These 120 Christians immediately began preaching the gospel in other languages. When the crowd asked, what is going on? Peter explained that this had always been God's plan. In Acts 2, Peter quotes the prophet Joel by saying, And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. There are no longer just a few people who are spirit-filled among God's people. The Bible tells us that everyone who hears the word of truth and responds in faith receives the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1 says, When you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. We no longer need prophets in the same way because Christians have immediate and unrestricted access to God through his spirit whom he's given to us. Number three, today God's message is proclaimed by all Christians. God's chosen messengers in the Old Testament were prophets and the message was that all people need a savior. 
Jesus teaches us that the message today is the gospel, the good news, that anyone who stops trying to earn their own worthiness in God's eyes and simply trusts in Jesus will have eternal life. And who's charged with delivering this message? Jesus' disciples. The end of Matthew's gospel says this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is why the Bible teaches that the last prophet in history is John the Baptist, who concluded his ministry prior to Jesus' death. The law and the prophets were until John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God is preached. Today, God sends all of his disciples to preach the good news instead of just a small select group of people. So what's the point? We no longer need a mediator between us and God because we have Jesus. God's people no longer have restricted access to God because we have his spirit within us. And the ones tasked with delivering God's message to the world are Christians, all God's people who have the Spirit. Simply put, we no longer need prophets like the LDS Church teaches.